Peace be upon you all. Welcome to my channel. The simulation of the Mark 6e that I provided includes Simplicity, which works perfectly with Proficy Machine Edition, PME. PME contains a programmed, simulated GE PLC, specifically a GE Series 90 to 30 IO. I think you get the idea, we'll be integrating PME with my simulation in future videos. If you want to download the simulation and PME, check the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and feel free to leave a comment. Now, I welcome you to the Machine Edition Guided Tour. This guided tour is designed to familiarize you with the Machine Edition environment and some of its basic tools necessary to build a project. I'll take you step by step through the process of building a ladder logic program, complete with the Human Machine Interface, HMI. By the end of this guided tour, you'll have built a small conveyor system for a packaging plant. Along the way, you'll see how easy it is to share data, templates, graphical objects, ladder logic instructions, and scripts between the various components within Machine Edition. This guided tour is especially useful for users of Logic Developer PC and View Developer. Combining it with a Mark 6e simulation will open up exciting new possibilities. Here's the scenario. You've been hired by a company called Industrial Packers Limited. They package touchscreen panels, and up until now, they've done it all by hand. But business is booming, and they need your help automating a new conveyor system. This system includes One hopper to fill the first half of a box with packing foam A robotic arm to place the panel And a second hopper to fill the rest of the box Your mission? Build the control logic and the graphical interface Let's open up Logic Developer PC and View And get started with the first step, creating your project Start by right-clicking on my computer in the Manager tab of the Navigator, and select New when the dialog box opens, name your project Industrial Packaging. Choose the template called Guided Tour FX Conveyor Project. This will add all the components you need, like the Logic, HMI, and the GE Series 90 to 30 IO driver. And here's the best part you won't need any actual hardware. The simulation scripts are built in, so you can follow the whole tour right on your computer. Once the project is created, you'll see two new tabs the Project tab and the Variables tab. Take a minute to look around and get familiar. In Machine Edition, your project is made up of logic, graphics, scripts, everything needed to run your application. Think of each component, like HMI or logic, as building blocks, and your target is where it all runs. Now let's build the control logic for the hoppers using something called the tool chest. The tool chest is awesome. It's like a library of reusable objects, called FX classes, that bundle together graphics, logic, variables, and animations. We'll be using these to speed things up big time. Each FX class has different FX parts, like logic, graphics, and custom variables. When you drag in a logic FX part, you'll be prompted to assign it to a structure variable. Let's go ahead and open the tool chest, navigate to the guided tour drawer, and drag in the hopper's logic FX part. Call the first one hopper 1. These are linked objects, which means they stay connected to the FX class in the tool chest. So, if you update the FX class, all linked objects update automatically. Super handy when you're working on scalable systems. You can view the variables associated with the logic you added by checking the variable tab in the inspector. Now do it again, this time, call it Hopper 2. You can check the variables anytime you like. Let's switch to the panel editor. Open the home panel. And now we'll add the graphical representations. From the tool chest, drag in the graphics FX part for Hopper 1. You can click on this icon to see the properties. Dock the inspector window wherever you want. Position the hopper 1. Top, 120, left, 163 pixels. 
do the same for hopper 2 and place it at top, 120, left, 499 pixels. By assigning the same structure variable names to both the logic and the graphics, everything stays in sync. So when hopper 1's valve opens in the logic, the animation reflects that in real time. Remember, the visuals are pre-configured for those coordinates. If you move them around, it'll still work, but might not look right. Now, sometimes you'll need an object that's a little different, like our robotic arm. In this case, we'll create an embedded object instead of a linked one. This lets you customize it without affecting the base FX class. Let's add the robotic arm. Back in the ladder editor, go to the robot FX class in the tool chest, hold down the shift key, and drag the logic FX part into the ladder diagram. Name this structure variable robot1. Because this object is embedded, you can modify it directly. It doesn't update if the FX class changes, perfect when you need one-off customizations. You can compare the variables shown in the logic with those listed in the navigator. By the way, you'll also notice a universal variable called $CStop in the variable list. Universal variables are global, they're not tied to any specific structure, and you can use them anywhere. Now let's add the robotic arm to the HMI panel. To begin, open the home panel by double-clicking it in the project tab of the navigator. Now, hold down the shift key, and drag the graphics FX part of the robot FX class from the tool chest into the home panel. When prompted, select the structure variable robot1, which you previously created for the logic. This links the graphical robot to the same variable used in the latter logic, enabling them to communicate. Select the newly added robot object. In the inspector, set the top property to 146 pixels and left to 306 pixels. These coordinates are pre-configured for animation. If placed elsewhere, the project will still run, but the visual won't align properly. So far, you've used linking and embedding to add objects. Next, we'll use the third method, pasting. When you hold the control key and drag an FX class into the panel or ladder, it creates a pasted copy, completely independent of the original FX class. These objects don't use structure variables and won't update if the original FX class changes. Now, inserting the conveyor logic. Open the ladder program from the navigator. Now, expand the conveyor FX class in the guided tour drawer of the tool chest. While holding control, drag the logic FX part into the ladder, placing it between the fourth rung and the end rung. On rung 5, right-click left of the first NC contact and choose Insert Instruction After. Type N and double-click NC from the list. Leave the variable blank for now. Repeat to add two more NC contacts on the same rung. From the variable list, expand the hopper 1 structure. Drag hopper 1.active onto the first NC contact, then do the same with hopper 2.active and robot 1.active for the next two. Your rung should now check if all three stations are inactive before running the conveyor. Now let's insert the conveyor graphic. Return to the home panel. Hold Ctrl and drag the graphics FX part of the conveyor from the tool chest into the panel. In the inspector, set top to 318 pixels and left to 116 pixels. Again, precise placement ensures animations look correct. And now we insert the box. Expand the box FX class in the tool chest. Hold Ctrl and drag the graphics FX part into the home panel. In the inspector, set top to 294 pixels and left to 94 pixels. This box simulates photo eye activation, triggering the conveyor movement. Now we need to arrange layers for proper animation. For the animation to display correctly, objects need to be layered appropriately. If needed, enable the object manipulation toolbar by navigating to Options tab in the navigator and select toolbars page then click and from the properties in the inspector set object manipulation tools to true. Now, select the robot, and click send to back. Select the box, and click Bring to Front. Do the same for both hoppers. This ensures that the box travels visibly on top of the conveyor, not behind it. 
you can right click on the object and select bring to front. Let's validate the project. To check for errors, right click target one in the navigator and choose validate. This will compile and save your project, reporting any issues in the feedback zone. Press F4 to cycle through messages in the feedback tab. If you see no errors, you're ready to run the project. Now is the time for downloading and running the project. In the inspector for target one, set enable IO to false. This disables connection to physical hardware. Right click target one and choose download and start. Confirm in the dialog box. The view runtime opens full screen. Watch your animation as the box moves, fills, and cycles through the packaging system. To minimize runtime, click the Minimize button. You can start the VU runtime by right-clicking on Target 1 and choose Offline Commands the Start Runtime. To see power flow in your logic, open the ladder program. Right click target 1 and select go online. The icon will turn green, and you'll see live execution of your ladder diagram. Take time to observe the logic and monitor the runtime, it will help you understand how everything works. To exit, right-click Target 1, select Go Offline, click No in the Retentive Values dialog, then select Stop Runtime. You can use Quick Test for faster feedback. To test changes without re-downloading, use the Quick Test. In the Home Panel Editor, click an empty spot. Now, try this. Draw a rectangle in the panel. On the File Toolbar, click the Quick Test button. A View Runtime window opens instantly. You can see the box you added. Open its properties, go to the Fill tab, and enable Vertical Fill Animation. Bind it to Hashtag Current Time. SEC. Click Quick Test again and watch the rectangle animate based on the current seconds. The rectangle updates its animation in response to changes in the seconds time variable. Don't want to keep this? Simply close the project without saving. To restart the project, just double click it. It's easy to configure an I.O. If you have the GE Series 90-30 hardware, follow these steps. Double click the GE Series 90-30 driver in the Project tab. Add modules to Slot 1 and Slot 2. IC693 at 300 and IC693 MDL730.
drag variables like hopper one photo i robot one done etc onto input and output terminals If you don't have the hardware, skip saving the I.O. config so you can continue simulating the project. Now that you've completed the guided tour, you're ready to create your own automation systems in Machine Edition. Build your own project. At the end I remind you that if you want to download the Mark V simulation and PME software, check the comments below. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave your comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.